Welcome to Loyola University Chicago's School of Education course titled Technology Enhanced Instruction 1 Designing Enhanced Instruction Through Integration of Technology. My name's Bruce Montes and I'll be your instructor for this course. Let's begin with me sharing a bit about myself. I'll be your instructor for this course. I am the Director for Academic Technology Services at Loyola, and I teach part-time for the School of Education. I've been with Loyola and in the technology profession for 38 years, and have been teaching for over 15. I've always had a passion for technology, and have studied and practiced it my entire working life. I also have a passion for learning. That said, my work for IT and Loyola and my teaching for the School of Education are a great mix. I've listed my contact information here. You can usually get a hold of me through email anytime and I usually will get back to you within hours if not sooner. My office hours are listed here. While I'm usually on campus during the weekday hours, I can also meet with you off hours via technology. All I ask is that you make appointments with me prior to meeting. Let's look at this course. We will explore the key components of problem-based and project-based learning and will focus on designing instruction which incorporates these components and enhances them through the integration of technology. There will be a special emphasis placed on the use of well-known and readily available software applications in order to align instruction with the International Society for Technology and Education, or ISTE, standards. ISTE standards, formerly the NETS for student standards, are the common standards used for evaluating the skills and knowledge that students need to learn effectively and live productively in an increasingly global and digital world. Let's take a few minutes to go over some of the course objectives, requirements, and logistics. You won't be required to purchase any textbooks for this course. I will be drawing on different learning theories and research from different disciplines, and will reference a number of texts. The textbooks that I list here are closely related to the course content, and if you were looking to acquire any text that would be related to the course, these texts would be recommended. This course will require regular use of technology. It is, after all, a course related to integrating technology in the classroom, so we will be using a Windows-based PC on a regular basis. We will also be looking at a variety of software tools. We will not be teaching basic computer skills in this course. Those basic computer skills such as starting a computer, using a mouse, computer, and basic Windows programs will be considered prerequisite knowledge for this course. The Graduate School of Education at Loyola has developed a conceptual framework of standards focused on professionalism in service of social justice. Technology continues to evolve and access to technology is increasing. These advancements allow for more people to learn new skills, acquire qualifications, gain confidence in using technology, and be in a position to serve others. Responsible integration of technology provides for standard-aligned instructional content to be delivered by a variety of methods, as well as engaging students in the process of constructing their own learning through inquiry and problem solving. Digital tools and software applications enable teachers to reach a wide range of students with unique learning styles and needs. This course seeks to enable its participants to seamlessly integrate technology into curriculum in order to assess their students in mastering core content and technology competencies essential to their success in school and workplace. Loyola School of Education uses a conceptual framework through its components of service, skills, knowledge, and ethics. This framework guides the curricula of the School of Education's programs in the preparation of professionals in service of social justice. 
Three dimensions of the conceptual framework also serve as the foundation to the School of Education's conceptual framework standards. These standards are explicitly embedded in major benchmarks across all SOE programs. This course will emphasize the course framework standard number five, which reads, Candidates demonstrate technological knowledge and skills which enhance education. That's a broad statement. We will cover a wide range of technologies and instruction, and when you successfully complete this course, you will be practiced in this framework standard. This course will prepare students to meet conceptual framework standard number five and other educational goals. The framework standard that I just mentioned identifies NETS student standard technological skills. This course will place an emphasis on NETS S standards numbers 1, 2, 3, and 6. In recent years, the NETS S standards have also been referred to as the International Society for Technology and Education, or ISTE, standards. The ISTE standards that this course will focus on includes, that, includes those that I list here. We will become familiar with the standards and will be able to identify and apply them. We will also learn to describe the process for developing problem and project-based instruction. There is a design process called NTEQ. NTEQ is a model for planning and how to integrate computer technology into the classroom. We will be learning this model in this course and will be learning how to develop lesson plans using the model. These lesson plans will also use problem and project-based learning approaches, which will meet NETS, S, and content standards. At the end of the course, you will be asked for feedback. This feedback will be used to evaluate the effectiveness of the course, the instruction, and the alignment to course objectives. There are several objectives for this course, which I list here. The first two objectives listed have been identified as essential for this course. I have defined objectives three and four as important and the remainder as minor objectives for this course. It is my goal to address all of these objectives through collaboration, review, and practice in this course. You are probably wondering how you will be assessed during this course and what assignments there will be. Your grade will be a comprised work of eight different areas including seven assignments and an eighth category I call active participation. We will use a point-based system where you will have the opportunity to earn up to 100 points for the course through completing the seven assignments and being an active and regular participant in the course. With the first of the seven assignments, you will be assigned a partner and the two of you will be assigned a productivity software program to present to the rest of the class. Your presentations will provide a functional knowledge of the software and benefit other students with ways of integrating the software with instruction. I will provide more information about this assignment in the upcoming class. Assignment one will be worth five points. The second assignment will help you to learn and practice problem construction. Using graphic organizer software, you will create a map of a problem that you will use in a lesson plan. This lesson plan will be part of assignment three. The map you create will deconstruct the problem into the core principles and relevant learning goals and objectives. It will also identify the standards associated with the learning goals and objective. As part of the assignment, you will use a 3C, 3R model in your problem construction. You will have the opportunity to earn five points with the second assignment. The third assignment will focus on creating lesson plans. Using the problem-based learning framework and the NetEQ model, you will create an original lesson plan, which is based on the problem you constructed in the second assignment. With the lesson plan, you will identify the content and the NETS-S objectives and the standards to which they are aligned. 
Your lesson plan will include at least one software application such as that that is integrated in the lesson. The lesson plan will be detailed enough for any teacher working in the same grade to understand and easily implement it. The plan will include a well-articulated rationale for how the selected software will be used to fulfill both the content standards and the NETS S. The third assignment will be worth 20 points or 20% of your overall goal. The fourth assignment will be worth 15 points and will involve the use of elaboration or cognitive flexibility theory to construct a standalone instructional product known as a learning object. Through integrating digital resources such as graphics, audio, and video, you will build your learning object using PowerPoint. The learning object can also include website and web resources. The fourth assignment will be worth 15 points. As part of your fifth assignment, you will learn some basics of animation and use those skills to build another learning object, which will include animation. This project will also involve the use of digital resources and will integrate an animation process to create the learning object. The object must include narration, pedagogical prompts, and learning objectives and assessments. The sixth assignment will be worth 10 points and will serve as the initial component of your final and third learning object project, which is the final assignment. For this sixth assignment, you will create a storyboard, which will provide information about the design, content, and sequencing, and structure of the learning object project that you will choose to develop for assignment seven. You will learn storyboarding techniques as part of the sixth assignment. The last assignment, which will be worth 20 points, will be building a learning object of your choice. The project will involve the use of elaboration or cognitive flexibility theory to construct a learning object using digital resources. Similar to the fourth assignment, the main focus with the seventh assignment is to utilize and build on the skills you've acquired with all the assignments to create instruction. This last assignment will provide you with choosing the technology and content that you would like to develop and will be worth 20 points. The final component of your grade will include points for participation, 10 points to be exact. As this course uses a workshop model, it is expected that students will provide constructive and informative feedback to others in this class related to their projects. You will participate in multiple asynchronous and synchronous activities, which will be graded individually and will contribute to the course grade. This includes both in-class activities and out-of-class asynchronous activities. I will have more information about class participation opportunities as the weeks go on. Here is an overall breakdown of the possible points for this course. Please be sure to keep up with the assignments and schedule to ensure that you don't fall behind. There will be lots of hands-on and out-of-class work that will be required to complete all of these assignments. For this course, late work is not acceptable unless prior arrangements have been made with me. Please note that late work will be accepted if prior arrangements are made, but will be reduced significantly in points earned. If work is turned in late, feedback will be less and the assignment will not be graded and returned as rapidly as if the work had been turned in on time. If you know in advance that you will be gone when an assignment is due, please plan ahead and let me know and submit it early. If you have unforeseen personal circumstances which will impact your work, please talk with me with your concerns for completing the course obligations. Here is the table depicting the grading schedule that the School of Education uses. I've listed the link to the table here along with links to the School of Education's academic policies and course withdrawal and incomplete policy and procedure. If you find yourself in a position that you will need to consider withdrawing or not be completing the course, please be sure to contact your advisor in the school as early as possible. 
This is a graduate level course and we distinguish each of you as students, learners, and scholars. As such, it is expected that you will view yourself in the same manner. You have chosen to be here and therefore are responsible for your own behavior, learning, and success. However, as a group, we make up a class and as such are a professional and scholarly community. In order to succeed as individuals and as a group, we must be willing to agree to the following set of expectations. We each come to this class with differing backgrounds and experience. In working with technology, it is important that we work together to further our own knowledge and skills and the knowledge and skills of others in the class. It is important that each of us be willing to support and help each other further our own knowledge and skills related to technology and education and contribute to our knowledge forum. Academic honesty is an expression of interpersonal justice, responsibility, and care applicable to Loyola University students, faculty, and staff. This demands that the pursuit of knowledge in the university community be carried out with sincerity and integrity. Please be sure to take some time to review the Schedule of Education's policy on academic integrity. I've listed the link to the policy here. Additional academic policies and procedures can also be found here. Found here. Students who have disabilities which they believe entitle them to accommodations under the Americans with Disabilities Act should register with the Service for Students with Disabilities Office. To request accommodations, students must schedule an appointment with an SSWD coordinator. Students should contact SSWD at least four weeks prior to their first semester or term at Loyola. Returning students should schedule an appointment within the first two weeks of the semester or term. The University Policy on Accommodations and Participation in Courses is available at this web address. It is unacceptable and a violation of university policy to harass, discriminate against, or abuse any person because of their race, color, national origin, gender, sexual orientation, disability, religion, age, or any other characteristic protected by applicable law. Such behavior threatens to destroy the environment of tolerance and mutual respect that must prevail for the university to fulfill its educational and healthcare mission. For this reason, every incident of harassment, discrimination, or abuse undermines the aspirations and attacks the ideals of our community. The university qualifies these incidents as incidents of bias. In order to uphold our mission of being Chicago's Jesuit Catholic University, a diverse community seeking God in all things, and working to expand knowledge in the service of humanity through learning, justice, and faith, any incident of bias must be reported and appropriately addressed. The bias response team was created to assist members of the Loyola University Chicago community in bringing incidents of bias to the attention of the university. If you believe you are subject to bias, you should notify the bias response team using this link. As part of its mission, Loyola University states, Shaped by our city and our Jesuit traditions, Loyola University Chicago offers students an educational environment unmatched for its diversity of thought and experience. This course will address diversity through multiple means. Learning and instruction will be examined in multiple settings and cultures. Development of instruction and learning will be focused on identification of differences in multiple learning styles, gender, background, physical abilities, and cultural values. Diversity will be addressed through the integration of technology. Finally, diversity will be addressed in this course through an emphasis of respect and care for all individuals. I mentioned that diversity will be partially addressed through the integration of technology. In this course, the technology integration will be achieved through multiple means. I will use technology during class sessions to support the delivery and sharing of course content via the course management system Sakai and through using the classroom technology such as the computer, network, 
sound and presentation systems, and online class sessions. You will use technology in the classroom for assignments and outside of the classroom to gain technical knowledge and skills. Finally, technology will be used to support collaboration activities of students across multiple locations through asynchronous and synchronous communication and with a diverse audience to support a community of learning. That completes an overview of the course, its objectives, and its requirements. Please be sure to contact me with any questions related to the course. I'm looking forward to working with you.